In the crucible of the Cold War's fierce aerial competition, Pavel Sukhoi, a tenacious Soviet engineer, relentlessly pursued his dream to create a transformative aircraft. His vision eventually took shape in the Sukhoi Su-7, an audacious creation that was a daring fusion of cutting-edge design, advanced aerodynamics, and raw, unyielding power. As the test pilot fired up the engines and catapulted the machine skyward for its maiden flight, the Earth below transformed into clouds and sky. Despite countless setbacks and failures, Pavel remained unwavering in his quest to create the ultimate fighter bomber. Yet, Destiny had other plans in store for the service life of the Sukhoi Su-7, most of which would extend far beyond Soviet territory. Breaking Barriers Pavel Osipovich Sukhoi, a gifted Soviet aerospace engineer, began his aviation career in the 1930s, working for the Experimental Design Bureau, OKB, led by Andrei N. Tupolev. By the summer of 1941, when the Germans invaded the USSR, Sukhoi had become the leader of his own branch. But despite his many promising aircraft designs, none saw significant success, leading to the OKB's shutdown in 1949. After the passing of Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin in 1953, Sukhoi lobbied for another opportunity to run his own experimental design bureau and was successful. Soon after, the newly revived Sukhoi OKB was tasked with developing a tactical fighter and an interceptor for the VVS, or Red Air Force, based on the advanced AL-7F afterburning turbojet designed by Arkhip Lyulka. The Sukhoi team then created the swept-wing S-1 Strela, a prototype with a groundbreaking design, being the first Soviet aircraft to utilize the all-moving tailplane and a translating center body, a movable inlet cone in the air intake that managed airflow in the engine while flying at supersonic speeds. This innovative aircraft laid the foundation for the promising future of the reborn Sukhoi OKB, paving the way for new developments in Soviet aviation technology. Sky Pioneer Soon enough, the S-1 Strela demonstrated impressive potential during its initial test flights. In April 1956, test pilot V. N. McCollin achieved a level speed of 1,350 miles per hour, or Mach 2.04, exceeding the required specifications. This remarkable achievement showcased the true capabilities of the S-1, as well as Soviet aviation. The aircraft's performance caught the attention of NATO observers during the 1956 Soviet Aviation Day presentation at Tushino Airport near Moscow, earning it the NATO reporting name Fitter. However, behind the scenes, the test flights were not without their challenges. The AL-7F engine proved particularly troublesome, and the Strela prototype configuration was deemed unsatisfactory for production. Consequently, an improved S-2 machine was built, making its maiden flight in early September 1956, with test pilot Nikolai I. Korovushkin at the controls. The new and improved model featured a stretch fuselage for increased fuel capacity and reduced armament. Change of plans. Tragedy struck the Sukhoi OKB facilities on November 23, 1957, when the original S-1 suffered an engine failure. The pilot, I. N. Sokolov, attempted to land the aircraft without power but ultimately crashed and perished. The SU continued trials until the first production SU-7 was built in the spring of 1958. Approximately 20 initial production SU-7s were constructed, primarily for testing. Despite its clear potential, the aircraft faced numerous problems that needed to be resolved before entering operational service. Regardless, the program persisted, leading to the production of the base SU-7 fighter in 1959. As was common in the ever-evolving aviation industry, Red Air Force officials had shifted the SQ-7's focus from air combat to a fighter bomber. To accommodate this change, SUOKB updated the design with airframe reinforcement, increased internal fuel capacity via wing tanks, and stronger landing gear for the higher maximum takeoff weight. This bomber variant, known as the SU-7B, was ordered into production in July 1958 and retained the NATO reporting name Fitter A, which remained consistent across all single-seat fixed-wing SU-7 variants. New Heights While the SU-7 family would evolve considerably during its lifetime, the early SU-7B is a baseline of all variants. 
the SU-7B carried forward the sleek, streamlined design and introduced enhancements tailored for high-speed, low-altitude operations. Maintaining its predecessor's bare metal finish, the model boasted an adjustable nose cone and a conventional empennage, complete with a large vertical swept tail fin and horizontal tail planes. The type's heavily swept, mid-mounted wings featured boundary layer fences past the middle span, reminiscent of early MiG jet fighters. Constructed predominantly from aviation aluminum for durability, the SU-7B housed a powered AL-7F-1100 turbojet engine that was, at least on paper, set to deliver a powerful performance, ensuring the aircraft's formidable presence in the Cold War-era skies. True to Soviet might, the SU-7's standard armament consisted of two devastating 30mm Nudelman Richter NR-30 series cannons, each mounted in a wing root leading edge. This aircraft's six hardpoints could carry an array of conventional drop bombs, nuclear bombs, rocket pods, and AA-2 short-range air-to-air missiles, showcasing the versatility and sheer firepower that Russian aviation was renowned for. Inside the cockpit, the pilot was enveloped in a pressurized canopy with a KS-2A ejection seat, ensuring safe ejection at a minimum altitude of 350 feet, as well as advanced avionics systems. The production SU-7 entered service in 1961, poised to become a symbol of Soviet aviation strength during the Cold War. Promise and Pitfalls As the SU-7 joined the Soviet Air Force, its simple design made maintenance manageable and contributed to its rugged nature. Pilots valued its docile flight characteristics, user-friendly controls, and impressive speed at low altitudes. Despite these merits, the fitter's drawbacks began to overshadow its initial promise. To begin with, long takeoff runs and high landing speed challenged pilots, who risked stalling and crashing short of the runway. Poor cockpit visibility and the lack of an instrument landing system exacerbated these issues. But the biggest issue was the AL-7 engine's fuel consumption, severely limiting the SU-7's range and payload capacity. This would often force pilots to use two additional wing hardpoints for extra 600-gallon fuel tanks rather than weapons. Consequently, the aircraft could only complete short-range missions with minimal payloads, undermining its combat effectiveness. Attempts to improve the SU-7's performance led to JADO rockets being incorporated into the SU-7BKL. Another variant, the variable geometry Sukhoi SU-17, was developed to fully address the SU-7's limitations and offer a more versatile solution for the Soviet Air Force. Despite the SU-7 and its variants being the main Soviet ground attack aircraft of the 1960s, the aircraft never saw combat in the Soviet Union's service. The SU-7's flaws kept it away from the battlefield, adding to the growing list of disappointments for engineer Sukhoi. Export Adventures Foreign buyers, mainly in the Middle East, welcomed the aircraft with open arms, breathing new life into the fitter model. A total of 691 planes, including trainers, found their way to Egypt, India, Iraq, Afghanistan, and North Korea. A particularly notable chapter in the SU-7's combat history played out in the skies over Egypt during the Six-Day War. In July 1967, 12 SU-7s, each equipped with four 1,110-pound bombs, received orders to attack Israeli forces near the Suez Canal. Struggling to surpass speeds of 372 miles per hour, the heavily laden SU-7s faced performance issues due to drag and weight. This affected maneuverability, making the aircraft challenging to control in combat. Moreover, the SU-7's limited range forced pilots to hastily release their payloads and retreat. Following the war, the Soviets assisted in rebuilding the Egyptian Air Force. Consequently, the SU-7 continued participating in regional operations, striking Israeli targets in the Sinai and conducting swift tactical reconnaissance missions with British Vinter film cameras. The aircraft was also influential with the Indian Air Force, or IAF. During the 1971 war with Pakistan, the service tested the SU-7's capabilities with six squadrons operating 140 aircraft in total. IAF pilots flew nearly 1,500 offensive sorties, handling the majority of daytime attack missions. With an impressive operational tempo, some pilots achieved a sortie rate of six per day. Despite losing 14 aircraft primarily to anti-aircraft fire, the SU-7's capabilities demonstrated high resilience, often returning to base after sustaining significant damage. 
In one instance, Wing Commander H.S. Mangat's fitter was struck by a PL-2 missile fired by a Pakistan Air Force F-6. The impact tore off half the rudder and severely damaged the elevators, ailerons, and flaps. Remarkably, half the missile remained lodged in the chute pipe. The pilot still brought the aircraft home safely, showcasing the SU-7's incredible survivability. End of the road. The Afghan Air Force also put the Su-7 to the test during the Soviet-Afghan War in the 1980s. They relied on Soviet-made Su-7 fitters to support ground forces fighting against Mujahideen rebels. Afghan pilots, trained in the Soviet Union, executed critical ground support missions, often in hazardous conditions, to provide air cover for their troops. The Su-7's agility and ability to operate from rough, unprepared airstrips proved invaluable for the Afghan Air Force. With diverse payload capabilities, pilots adapted to changing battlefield conditions and delivered devastating close air support strikes. During the 1987 Battle of Zhaji, Su-7 pilots, outnumbered and outgunned, carried out numerous sorties, inflicting heavy casualties on enemy forces and halting their advance. Afghan Su-7 pilots faced significant challenges, including mountainous terrain, unpredictable weather, and a lack of advanced navigation and targeting systems. Despite these obstacles, their unwavering commitment and willingness to undertake dangerous assignments with the fitter earned them their comrades' respect, helping to turn the tide of the war. While some sources suggest that Red Air Force brass saw the Su-7 as a disappointment, comparing its effectiveness to the older MiG-17s used as strike fighters, the Soviets continued refining the Su-7, leading to the development of a new generation of aircraft that would replace the fitter A model. The Su-7 remained in Soviet service until 1986, eventually replaced by the more advanced Su-17 and the formidable MiG-27 in its role. Some accounts even suggest that North Korean Su-7s are still in service today. The Su-7's innovative design provided crucial lessons for Sukhoi and other Soviet aerospace designers. The aircraft shortcomings in fuel consumption, range, and payload capacity informed the development of advanced aircraft such as the Su-17 and Su-25, ultimately leading to the success of Sukhoi's future endeavors. Thank you for watching our video on the Su-7 aircraft. Subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content on aviation history, and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels. Remember to hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos, and feel free to leave a comment or suggestion on what you'd like to see next.